You come across a burning tree in a forest. As the fire dies down, you see the charred trunk return to a pristine tree. When the flame is at its smallest, you hear a roar of thunder roll across the sky and the fire is extinguished by a lightning strike. Awesome, but arguably counterintuitive. Effect has come before the cause. This is the principle of retro causality, or that the future can affect the past. And increasingly, some physicists are entertaining the idea that in certain places in the universe, to explain some of the phenomena we see there, this must be true. That the universe must be able to communicate with its younger self. That's what we're going to talk about today. Wait, stop! We're from the further, further future! What you guys do eventually works out. It's what you two are about to do that ruins everything! Stop! Don't do anything! Oh, for God's sake! We humans interact with time in a pretty straightforward way. We perceive it largely to be flowing in one direction, other than maybe when you're stuck on a customer service line, which feels like a never ending game of musical chairs, except the music is a repetitive hold jingle and the only prize is your sanity slowly slipping away. Thank you, Virgin Media, not sponsored. We think about this concept both in science and in our lives as the arrow or the direction that time flows in. But the problem with observing the universe on the human level that we are familiar with is that a lot of the strange phenomena of the universe are covered up or obscured. The really interesting things happen as you peel back the chaos of the universe and get down to its most fundamental parts. When the universe is stripped down to its smallest building blocks at the level of atoms, particles and quantum mechanics, you are really forced face to face with how the universe operates. And at that level, there are some questions and some results that make physicists and everyone else kind of uncomfortable. People assume that time is a strict progression of cause to effect, but actually from a non-linear, non-subjective viewpoint, it's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff. This ties back to the question that we've already covered on this channel, is the universe real? Or specifically, is the universe locally real? I'll leave a link somewhere on screen now so you can find the video. This is a question that has been fought back and forwards between some of the greatest minds to ever live, with people like Einstein supporting the idea that the universe is in fact real, and with people like Bohr suggesting the universe is not real. At the moment, the consensus surprisingly, is that Einstein is wrong. As a quick refresher, though I recommend you watch the video for a deeper understanding, let's look at that term, locally real. Locality is essentially the idea of cause coming before effect, or specifically that a cause can only have an effect nearby, locally. This is because as far as we have ever observed, information, cause, travels at the maximum speed of the universe, the speed of light. This is also the speed of cause and effect. You can't press a button here and have something instantaneously happen in a galaxy far, far away. You'd have to wait for the signal to reach that galaxy. That's localness. Realness, or realism, is the idea that the universe has definite properties. The objects have a specific position, speed, rotation, color, flavor, or any other property in between. That a packet of crisps that I take out of the cupboard was much like some YouTube comments, salty, both when I reached for them as well as all of the time prior to that point. Non-realness is the idea that only when you observe something does it pick its properties. This is the whole argument behind if a tree falls in the forest, does it actually make a sound? Now both of these ideas seem completely reasonable. Well, physicists have proven that at least one of these ideas must be wrong. This was the subject of the 2022 Nobel Prize that revolved around an experiment conducted on quantum particles. I want to walk us through this experiment, explore just how truly counterintuitive it is, and then offer a substitution scenario, that of retrocausality, and if that is at play, does it save us from some of these more confusing concepts of quantum mechanics? So let's take a look at how this actually might play out. Let's imagine I fire a photon through a special crystal called a spontaneous parametric down conversion crystal that splits photons into two. 
I know that the photon I sent into the system had zero spin, so to conserve energy in the universe, the two photons that are created from this photon must have equal and opposite spins so that they cancel to zero. This is the idea of entanglement, that their properties are linked, correlated, but I don't know which one is which until I actually go to measure one of them. We call this collapsing the wave function. Now the states of the photons are known. This is the same idea as Schrodinger's cat being both alive and dead until you actually go to open the box. <coughs> However, counterintuitively, how I measure that photon matters. If I measure it looking for up or down photons, the other photon will always be an up or down photon. However, if I measure it looking for spin left or spin right particles, then the other photon will be correlated as either a spin left or spin right photon. A deeper explanation of this, like I said, can be found in the video here, but the question, how has this happened and how did the particle on the right know which state to be in? Well, there were three potential explanations. Explanation number one, either the universe is locally real, the photons decided what states they would have at the very beginning, we just couldn't determine that information. This is Einstein's view and this is called hidden variable theory, or we might explain it through things like superdeterminism, which is a preferred explanation as far as I can tell of internet and real life physicists like Sabine. This explanation feels both intuitive and at the same time unintuitive. These photons are created in the same place at the same time. They are locally correlated. So absolutely, it feels allowable that they could transfer some information between the two of them, but it feels very strange that that information could be encoded in such a way that it doesn't allow us to access it. Option number two would be that the universe isn't locally real. The photons really, really do not make up their minds until the moment of measurement. And at that moment, they adopt their chosen states. They communicate instantaneously with each other to tell which state the other one should be in, no matter how far away they have been separated. The results of the Nobel Prize winning experiment concluded that option two, the universe is not locally real, was correct, following an experiment around the Bell inequality. They really are actually both spinning up and down, left and right, or some combination of the above, until the point of measurement. This, I think, seems doubly frustrating as an explanation. The photons both haven't made up their minds, and they have to be able to instantaneously communicate to one another. It feels like the worst possible outcome, but this is the generally accepted principle among the physics community. But what would happen if we had another explanation? Last night's time travel experiment was apparently a complete success. Let's look again at this situation and envisage a retrocausality explanation. According to retrocausality, as soon as the measurement was made on the first particle, that decision was correlated back through time to the very moment where these two photons were created, allowing that correlation to influence and embed in both photons so that they agree on their spin direction when measured at some future point in time. Okay, potentially I can buy that as an idea, but I guess the question becomes, so what? What is the benefit to actually conceptualizing of the universe in this way? With a retrocausal model, we could remove that confusion about realism and locality. At the point of creation, the photons could have definitely decided their states, and we wouldn't need a mechanism to either explain how they communicated their collapse across the galaxy, or how they were hiding information from us that encoded these states in a way that we couldn't perceive. Another possible payoff would be that retrocausality is the idea that the wave function now would just be a mathematical encoding of our incomplete knowledge about a system, essentially saying that a wave function doesn't have to amount to anything actually physically real. It isn't both a particle that is spinning up and spinning down. We just don't know which one it is, so we're gonna write the maths in a way that that lets it be both until we've clarified it at the point of measurement. Interestingly, this makes the universe feel much more classical, potentially giving us a much more compatible way of integrating the quantum world into our theories for things like general relativity and the wider universe. 
This seems promising and potentially interesting, but ultimately to me, this feels like a bit of a bait and switch. Yes, we get to feel comfortable about things being real and having definite properties, and we no longer need to think about photons communicating magically with each other instantaneously across the universe, but we do now need a mechanism that explains how things can correlate backwards through time. We've swapped two uncomfortable ideas for one idea that's almost twice as uncomfortable. And I would ask, is that progress? Retrocausality would rely on our universe being something called time symmetric, that the laws of the universe would work the same way going backwards in time as forwards in time. And according to the second law of thermodynamics, this isn't true. Entropy, disorder, is always increasing and preventing things from moving backwards in time. Could it be a possibility, maybe, that this is just a macroscopic effect, and that the universe at its absolute most fundamental level is time symmetric and allows things to move in either direction? Maybe, but I'm not so sure. Regardless, time-based correlation is different to sending information back through time, which has all sorts of causality-breaking problems associated with it that we won't go into right now. Ultimately, I think retrocausality feels like a very roundabout way of getting back to a theory like superdeterminism, which is equally unpopular among the physics community, but via a time loop where the ride operator hopes you kind of don't notice that you're going back in circles. But what does this actually mean? Does this then suggest that actually that measurement was always predetermined, and that the starting conditions of those two photons was equally correlated to that measurement condition? That the universe's starting conditions have been set for a very long time, and it's just naturally playing out in a deterministic fashion? If I asked you to hit the like button, was it always predetermined on a quantum level whether you will or not? I'm hoping that you are super determined to. What do you think? I'd be interested to know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Potentially, I will use it as the topic of a future video. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.